So the step you're saying the steps are gone because they stole you, the they sold off their mom's wheelchair yeah. ramp. Okay, so I get the I get the ramp. Oh right, yeah, so. I mean, okay. steps will definitely. I mean, the the steps will come back. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Hey guys, it's Brandon here with Investment Joy, and at some point we will talk about Grandma there that had her um, wheelchair ramp stolen by her grandkids. That is a very small piece of this really weird puzzle about my second trailer park. Now the funny thing is with this video, I was going to release it quite some time ago, but then I didn't want to get bogged down by, you know, economic, politic type stuff. But I, I figured eh, it's time to talk about it. So do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, be sure you uh, both like the video and subscribe it and then consider signing up to Weeble or the stock program below where you can get up to $45 in free stock from a bunch of different uh, companies that sponsor my channel. But uh, we're talking about the wonderful trailer park behind me. It's actually the second trailer park that I accidentally kind of bought. And um, it's one of those things where I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying, why would you buy a second trailer park? Your first one's a disaster. And to my defense, it was kind of accidental. See, um, back in 2019, before the YouTube channel actually was exploding, I had purchased my trailer park. I purchased that trailer park around the first... Um, First week of October 2019, the next day we had a shooting at the trailer park, which was my first, uh, that's the first time that ever happened to me. And that following Monday, I drove to Columbus, Ohio to meet with a guy who had sent me a message on Facebook and said, I have a trailer park for sale. Would you like trailers? I figured, eh, why not? Let's go see what happened. And I had sent him a text message and said, what's the best deal you could cut me on trailers? And his response was, well, I can offer you trailers for $2,000 a piece. And I was like, man, if this is true, load me up on trailers, I'll buy your whole trailer park. Long story short, um, I drove up to the west end of Columbus, right around Hollywood Casino, if you guys are familiar with Columbus, Ohio. And I was shocked to find that there was an entire trailer park being bulldozed. It was something like 140 people in Columbus were being evicted in order to make way for luxury apartments. That's why they were selling all of these trailers so cheap. And it was really, really sad to see that um, all these trailers, it was something, you know, like 140 trailers had eviction notices on them. The whole trailer park was in disarray. There were semis coming in, pulling out trailers for the trailers that the tenants had owned the titles on. They actually owned the trailers. They were trying to relocate them to the park. But the sad fact was almost all the trailers were either going to be tore down or auctioned off or sold in some way. And the trailer park operator had to end up evicting all the trailers. And driving around, it was an extremely depressing scene. I saw several trailers that were being just completely bulldozed. Some trailers were being um, tore, tore apart uh, to be moved out. And in this process, I was negotiating with the um, handyman or the guy that was dealing with a lot of these trailers to purchase essentially a full second trailer park worth of trailers for the princely sum of $2,000. And then we had to move them down to my other trailer park. So I ended up buying a second trailer park in Columbus, Ohio and doing it. But that's kind of, to me, not where the big story is. If you would look on the screen behind me, I switched it to a nice apartment complex. And the reality was this trailer park was being bulldozed to make way for luxury apartments. And I, I get on like Reddit, the Columbus subreddit, and there are so many people that are just aggravated. They hate the fact that there's luxury apartment developers building um, what some would consider cookie cutter um, luxury apartments. I think they look pretty cool, but th there's aggravation all across America for these different companies that are building luxury apartments. Some would even say that they're not luxury apartments. I got on their website, they look really cool, but I was kind of shocked because of the price. Where those trailers were at this other trailer park in Columbus, the lot rent and the trailer rent was very similar to what I'm getting um, south of Columbus. They were getting about 550 to $600 um, around 2015, 2016, 2017 off of their trailers. Um, the trailer park was definitely more spacious than my trailer park. Um, the overall condition, on average, was nicer than mine, but it, it provided a really affordable option for people on the west end of Columbus 
to uh, have trailers, live in a trailer park, and you know, for under 600 bucks, you can get your housing met, uh, your housing needs met, and it's kind of close to the casino, which is an up and coming neighborhood. Now, of course, if you are renting one of these apartments, and through my research, I found out they run between $1,300 and $1,600 per month, if you would stand overlooking the balcony behind your luxury apartment, at least in 2019, you would see a trailer park. And what's interesting to me is, um, through this whole process, the trailer park owner decided it was no longer advantageous to take the cash flow off of those trailers. Now think about it. If he was clearing $300 per month, how much money is that uh, on 140, 140 trailers? That's like what, $40,000, $45,000 a month the guy was making off of trailers? But at some point he found it more advantageous to sell to the luxury apartment developer. But through this whole process, from what I've seen, is it's getting harder and harder and harder to own a mobile home park. The regulations are getting higher, the uh, cash flow is dropping, the requirements to operate a trailer park just get a little higher every year. And what's also interesting to me, on our Discord, there's a guy that owns multiple, multiple trailer parks and owns like 700 apartment, uh, uh, not apartment complexes, but 700 apartment units. And he mentioned to me on Discord last week that there has been a total of 10 trailer parks that have been new developments in the United States in the past like four or five years. It's stunning to me. Even though this luxury apartment developer in Columbus already owns like a dozen luxury apartment complexes with hundreds of units at thousands of dollars per month in rent. Now, the takeaway is a lot of people would look at the luxury developer and they would blame them. They would say, you're running the small trailer park operator out of the area. You're replacing 140 affordable trailers for, you know, 60 luxury apartments at triple the cost. A lot of people would put blame on the luxury developer. But from my perspective, it doesn't really matter. I was the only guy in central Ohio that had interest in moving 29 trailers to another development. Long story short, most of them ended up being either bulldozed or auctioned. A lot went to individual people who tried to find them other places to put at on single lots, but no one did it from a development standpoint. Now, of course, I get complaints and made fun of all the time on social media and my YouTube channel about the condition of the trailer park, but the affordability has moved outside the city of Columbus to my trailer park where I'm going to reap the benefits. Could there come a day where I decide to sell out to a luxury apartment developer? Maybe so. But what's interesting to me is everybody complains about affordable housing, the lack of affordable housing, the overwhelming developments of these luxury apartment complexes, but no one wants to look at the dollars and the sense of it to realize that if you are a trailer park developer or you are any sort of business person, you're going to make the decisions what are, is the most profitable thing for you to do. And if that's continue the trailer park, you're going to do, continue a trailer park. If the most profitable thing that you do as a business person is to run a trailer park, then you're going to do it. If it makes most financial sense to sell your trailer park to a luxury developer and let them bulldoze it, then that's what you're going to do. But what's interesting to me is there's so many hurdles anymore to build a trailer park, develop a trailer park, operate a trailer park. And yet that's one of the many options for affordable housing. I've been able to get uh, 46 trailers. Or I will have 46 trailers on a five acre lot in Southern Ohio. We're gonna be able to keep the rents relatively low in the low $600 range. And we're gonna provide housing for 46 trailers. You know, you figure two people a piece. That's about a hundred people that I'll have created housing for on a five acre parcel. It's pretty good in my opinion. As in this trailer park up on the West End of Columbus was really no different. And it's why I really would love to see you as the person watching this, get into developing real estate, get into buying rentals, get into doing anything associated with real estate investing and consider don't key in on affordable housing, but consider it. Consider trailer parks, consider tiny house developments, consider apartment complexes, consider single family detached, even consider these luxury apartment complexes like this developer built, and I'm sure they're making good money off of them, and it's not their fault for what's going on in the market. From my perspective, we need more competition. We need more people learning and thinking about the fact that regardless of who you are, whether you're like me and you grew up poor, evicted twice, you can turn yourself around, you can turn your life around and get the person that evicted you when you were six years old as your investor so you can go and pursue your own real estate investments. We exist in this society where there are so much 
opportunities for learning stuff, free education, free knowledge on YouTube and social media. Um, I figured out how to upload really long TikToks. I uploaded one the other day and it's always interesting to me to see how many messages I get on Discord, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube when people say, I never realized I could go and start a business or I could buy an investment. A lot of people simply don't have that knowledge. And it's the nice thing in society where we have that ability to do that. And from my perspective, when that competition doesn't exist, there isn't a passion in a large amount of people, there isn't the desire for those things, you end up with grandma there having her steps stolen in the middle of the day by her grandkids so they can go and buy who knows what. Maybe they bought, bought a PlayStation 4. Maybe they spent it on some rock. I don't know what would have happened there, but something tragic did happen as the process of that trailer park being demolished and bulldozed and redeveloped into luxury apartments went. On one end, I realize I can't prevent all these tragedies. I've tried, believe me. Um, but I figure more competition and more variety that's in the marketplace everybody would have a little bit better. So consider real estate investing, buying a mobile home park, whatever it is that you have an interest in doing, um, do it, do it with passion and learn all you can because there's so much free knowledge out there. So after it's all said and done, the trailer park got demolished. It's now a flat rubble mess. They are building more luxury apartment complexes. We hauled all those trailers down to my trailer park and we merged two trailer parks into one trailer park, which is still being worked on, but hey, people are moving into it. And I'm really thrilled that my mobile home park is coming along and um, there's more development happening in central Ohio, lots more opportunities being built. But from my perspective, as fast as our market's growing, we still need more people investing in real estate. Once again, this is Brandon with Investment Joy. I appreciate every single one of you uh, who watches my videos. Let me know about the production quality in this video. I tried a different route yet again. Thanks for watching, guys. This one really doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, this one. Someone just ripped the door off or what? I just like that. I don't like that. There it is. Mm, too bad.